With the introduction of Vortex and NT toolpaths in earlier feature cam releases, some additional improvements have been made with the inclusion of support for multiple tools. Multiple tools can now be selected for both roughing and finishing, regardless of whether the Vortex or NT strategy is being used, creating rest machine processes which reference the previous operation. This also enables the stop model options for rest operations, providing more overall control. This greatly improves rest machining processes, allowing you to quickly generate efficient toolpaths that maximise the capability of your available tooling. Now in this particular example, we have this stamping die component that we've got a side operation that's been pre-created. There are also additional features if you wish to run through the simulation. Now in this case, if I zoom into here, we can see we've got a sharp internal corner. We may have to use an electrode to reduce or remove the rest of the material here, but we're going to try and machine as much as we possibly can. In this case, we're going to use multiple tools. If I go to this first feature, this is a multi-rough NT spiral, and we go to the strategy page, you can clearly see here that we've selected NT spiral as our step over type. This has no finishing operation associated with it in this case. If we go over to the rough operation, you can see here I've selected three different tool types, a 32, a 16 and a 5mm tool. Sure enough, if we go to each of our operations and look at the tooling, we can identify those tool sizes as being 32, 16 and 5. Now before we implemented the multiple roughing, what we would get is an NT spiral operation for our roughing pass, number 1. Subsequent roughing operations would resort back to the traditional technology toolpath. If I go ahead and play centerline simulation, we can see I get my initial roughing and then two rest machining passes like so. Now in the roughing it's a bit difficult to identify whether this was the old technology or the new technology. However we can make a change to this just to verify. If I go to rough pass 3, go over to the milling tab and straight away you can see I've got all the high speed machining options available to me. In this case I'm going to select my void overload I'm going to insert some trochoids on the part. I'm going to put a very, very small overload percentage, in this case 1%, say set and apply and OK. After then play my centerline simulation, you can clearly see the trochoids have been inserted in this area of the model. Taking this a stage further, the second feature if we look at the strategy page, you can see the step over has been set to Vortex. In this case, we've also used the default parameters that come with the Vortex options. Again, you can see we've got the same tooling being used throughout. And if we were to play our centerline simulation, you'll see we get Vortex toolpaths across the entire component, both in the full roughing of the pocket and also in the rest machining areas with those smaller tools. The final area is to highlight that this also works for finishing. So in this case, again, we go to the strategy page, note we have selected finish pass, NT tool paths, and note we have finish bottom set to NT spiral. We can also identify under the finish pass, again, you can see we've got high speed machining options, so clearly we're using the NT te technology. Let's play that, just to verify our toolpath shape. And note here we can make some additional changes. So here for example we can see the approach, in this case we're doing a linear approach. If I was to go back into my feature, back into the finish pass, and in this case I'm going to select under the step overs, I'm going to choose an arc lead, apply, and choose an arc approach as well. This gives us our arc shape and our toolpath. The other thing we can check is if we go to our feature type, go to the milling area, you'll notice that we have some stock model options available to us. It's worth noting that the first pass does not enable any stop model options. But because we are referencing the previous toolpath, 
every subsequent operation has a stop model option. So in this case I can go to my stop model options and I can choose to expand the area. Let's expand this by say a millimeter. Say OK. Apply. Replay our toolpath. And you can see we've got an extension in terms of the area we're dealing with for that rest machining. So this gives us more precise control over our rest machining operations within FeatureCam 2014 R2.